All right, welcome once again to Pennsylvania, and we are still in White Clay Creek Preserve here in Pennsylvania, all the way in southeastern Pennsylvania, just maybe a mile or two from the state of Delaware. And that ahead is the London Meeting Tract House, or church, built in 1729. So you know there's going to be a really cool old cemetery there with an interesting history to it, which we'll get to. So as we walk around the cemetery, we'll be looking for a certain grave of a boy named Fithian, I think I'd say it right, Fithian Minuet. Really old style name. Well, he's not a boy anymore, obviously. Well, he's nothing anymore. He's buried in the ground. But uh, when the story takes place, he was a boy. Wow. All right, let me turn you around. Yeah, check it out. There's the church. Here's the old cemetery. Got some other people out here already. Those are some oldies. All right, so let's get in there and see what we can find. Of course, we'll be looking at a lot of the tombstones, but when we find the one I'm looking for, I'll tell you the story. It involves uh, the Mason-Dixon line, or, or the men who formed or searched out the Mason-Dixon line, specifically Charles Mason, and a certain pocket watch of his. <laughs> All right, even a little bit of Edgar Allan Poe, perhaps. Let's get in there and have a look around. Looks like we can get in right here. I mean, this place is awesome. Look at those old, old trees. Beautiful old stone church and the old tombstones. Absolutely, this, I love places like this. Had a little bit of a, some difficulties today. I mentioned in some previous videos, just with directions and things breaking, but man, in the end, it's definitely worth it. I don't know where to start. I think there's some, looks like there's some older ones on the side here. Let's check these out first. So the name is Fithian Minuet we're looking for. Oh, there's a, there's a, uh, Sorry, there's a stone out here I want to check out. There used to be an Indian village around here too. I forgot about that. I think this stone uh, marks that. Let's get out here quick. Yeah. I'm never going to try and say that. Minguanan Indian Town. Well, I did try to say it. It was located here. The chief. Owala and his people of the the Unami group, their totem, the tortoise of the Lenny Lape or Delaware. Oh, this land, this area was sold to William Penn, 1688. Yeah. All right, just wanted to check that out. Let's get back inside. Man, this place is amazing. All right, Fithian. I think I saw a picture of it online, and it was, I don't think it was standing up, I think it was actually laying down. So it would be in, it would be a much older one. I see some 1860s here. John Ladder. So these are probably not what we're looking for. James McDonnell. 1803 to 1882. So I think we're looking for something quite a bit older. Yeah, you're hearing some road traffic. There's some, there's a road right here. Some people are driving by on a bike or riding by on their bike. They're not voices coming from the cemetery. Sarah, 1826, 1897. All right, let's, uh, just keep looking here. Oh, these are some, wow, these are like slabs up here. What does this one say? Oh, here's a revolutionary soldier. Not gonna be able to get a name off that, I don't think. Oh, let's back up. You can actually look inside the old building. 
a little bit there. So it does get used. All right, well, I'm gonna have a look around and uh, get back to you when I see something more interesting. Not that, not that everything here isn't interesting. I mean, all these, like, slabs are interesting. I forget what the name for these is called. But they are a lot more difficult to read because they uh, weather a lot quicker because they're facing upwards. Get the direct rain. John Little. Elizabeth Little. Yeah, and some of these are not such good shape, unfortunately. That's just the rigors of time. David Eaton, his wife Mary. All right, where, where's Fithian? It's like I said earlier, the picture I saw had his tombstone lying flat. So that's what I'm gonna look for, unless there was a different tombstone. I think I'm looking at this one upside down. No, this is not him. No. All right. That's gonna get pretty dark soon, after five o'clock. So I just got done talking with several of the other people who are here, and they're kind of looking for the same thing I am. A motorcycle. And they agree that it was a flat tombstone as well. So it could be one of the, I think it's one of these larger flat uh, markers. Wait for that motorcycle to get out here. Yeah, and they mentioned that at one point it was marked, there was a marker on it pointing out that it was the tombstone in particular. Let me tell you the story first, and then we'll continue looking for it. So when the Mason-Dixon line was being surveyed, I guess you could say, by Charles Mason and, uh, I forget his first name, but Dixon, they, uh, there was an inn nearby here, or they, well, maybe not the inn, but they camped nearby here in a tent. And a little boy, Fithian, I don't know, came up to their tent, and he was crying, and Charles Mason tried to comfort him, gave him his pocket watch to play with. Well, Fithian swallowed it, put in his mouth and swallowed it, and Charles was horrified because you know, it was his pocket watch, which were important back then, valuable. So this, as the tale goes, he cursed Fithian that, Fithian that the stopwatch would never stop ticking, ever. And apparently, um, as the story goes, he's buried in this cemetery, and if you find his grave, you can still hear the, the, uh, the uh, pocket watch ticking down below with him in the grave. So that's, that's what the story goes. It's the, the ticking, oh, I forget what they call it, the ticking something. The ticking tomb, the tale of the ticking tomb, I think they call it. So it's a nice little kind of a haunting type thing, not a scary haunting. I know the ticking pocket watch is scary, but it's interesting. Obviously it's not true. The pocket watch, they just need to be wound up continually so it wouldn't be ticking, but it's interesting. So in here somewhere is that uh, tomb. It'd be cool to at least find it, but I'm not sure. If it's not marked, like some of these tombs that are super hard to read. I mean, even if you use a little flashlight or something, they're just worn away, especially the flat ones. But I'm gonna keep looking. And apparently Edgar Allan Poe visited this area and they think he probably heard about this tale and they think his uh, one story, the Tell Tale Heart, was inspired by this little ticking tomb story. So that's kind of interesting as well. Just a beautiful location though. It is getting late, but I'm going to keep checking. Yeah, there, was, there are those people. I was talking to them. Alright. Let's keep looking. Because I almost kind of wonder if it's one of these. Like, this one is obviously damaged. You know, if this was the one, maybe somebody, maybe some idiots, you know, busted it open or something. Who knows? Maybe that's why they don't have it marked anymore. I wouldn't be surprised. 
because the name, yeah, the name would have been up this way. I can't really see anything. I wouldn't be surprised, actually. And I know some of you are wishing that I would stop and read some more of these tombstones today, but I'm kind of running out of time, and I'm, I was looking for that one in particular, and I wanted to tell that story about this place. It's inter an interesting tale, but I am I'm starting to run out of daylight. It's probably 5.30, going on 6. It's getting darker these days, so maybe some other time I'll come here and spend more time looking at the tombstones and telling the history of the church and the people who founded it. Because that has some cool history as well, but kind of running out of time for that today. So, all right, I'm gonna look around just a little bit more, but I'm, I'm starting to wonder if it was that broken one there, because that's what happens when stories like this become more and more popular on the internet. People, more and more people come here and damage stuff and do stupid stuff. And unfortunately, that's the way it is. They probably removed the marker signifying which grave it was, because I wouldn't be surprised if it got damaged. Or even if some of these over here are like split in half, who knows, people just have to do stuff like that. Oh well. Yeah, so I came around the backside again, but these are just com completely illegible, actually, but could even be one like that. But there's a lot of them that are busted in half like that from from the rigors of time, probably. Just like a number of these are all broken in the same place up there, so I'm kind of leaning with that one down here. But that's probably the one. I could be wrong. But, uh, just seems kind of interesting. I was kind of looking around to see if I could find any other tombstones with the same last name as well. The fact that this one is just busted completely off where the name would be. And from the photo I saw, there was like a marker up at the top. So I'm just kind of wondering, who knows, maybe someone even stole it. You know, some idiot. Things like that happen. Yeah, so my best guess is going to have to be that tombstone, or that marker right there, the one that's busted. It just seems kind of funny. It's the only one that's busted like that, right where the name would be. And it's a little bit different than the other ones, because it's entirely closed in brick. So that's my best guess, but without any other help, I'm just looking at more of the names. But without any other guidance to that, I could be wrong. You know, if you're watching this video and you know where it is exactly, you can say something. And like I said, I might come back here again sometime spend more time looking at some of the other markers here but it's still an interesting tale most likely not true i don't believe there's a, a ticking pocket watch still in one of these graves but it takes you to a bygone era a time long ago when things are different all right love that church too all right wonderful day starting to cool off but i gotta get home got a long drive home but Despite some difficulties today, it was still a great day. You gotta take the difficulties with the good days. All right, as always, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you around.